Hey, Optimancers. Uh, so, you know, on my channel, I've been doing builds for a while and I like to, you know, crunch numbers and and look at the each decision and kind of go through it. And uh, recently I've come across another channel that does a very similar thing, and that is D&D Optimized. And uh, so I just want to say hello. Hi, Colby. How are you doing? Hey, Chris. How's it going? Thanks really for good. having me. Super excited uh, to be here and to, and to do a little video together. Now, you said a second ago that, that you recently came across me. C can I ask w what it was that, that um, I guess, yeah. brought me to your attention? <laughs> um, okay. So specifically, the first time I didn't real, but the first exposure I had to your mm -hmm. channel was actually, uh, I was running a game. Okay. And one of the players of the game had taken elven accuracy knew, with, knew, with custom lineage. That's what I asked. And, and, well, and, and here's the thing is, uh, I said, oh, well, I don't think you can do that. And he said, you did a video where you said it was legal. <laughs> like, there's no way I did a video that I don't remember about, about custom lineage. And he's like, no, I, I, I don't have a link Positive. to it, but I know you did one. Oh, that's and, great. and so I, I was really confused because I'm like, there's no, what could I have possibly said that right. could have been misconstrued this is, as that? This is, this is theoretical optimizing at its worst, right? Yeah. As opposed to practical. And so when, when I, uh, well, no, not even close, <laughs> not even close, uh, but it was just, it was, uh, an opinion on the rules that I didn't have. And I was certain I hadn't shared, right. Mm -hmm. And I was being told I did share it. Right. So then, yeah, when I came, uh, I, I I don't know whether it was through a tweet that I saw mm -hmm. where I first the tag where that you had you, that you had been saying right. that it it was legal, and then I'm like, that's that's <laughs> where it was seen, right? Uh, so that that so so here's that story. Me to your attention right away. Here's the story from from my perspective. So um i was okay so after tasha's came out right i was like gosh it really seems like they're trying to decouple like anything sort of racial to like you know they're they're, they're just trying to oh, really open up right i agree they are and yes. and and so yeah you know i definitely kind of went well gosh based on some things that jeremy crawford's been saying in in some of these like video interviews that i've seen with him and, and things it seems like he's kind of saying you can be like a custom elf i think he actually said that in one of these videos but anyway regardless i'm like now i can see the argument for you know saying hey i'm a custom lineage but i'm like a custom elf i'm a half elf half dragonborn or you know or something like that and and still qualify for like a racial feat in that way i i did anytime i anytime i suggested doing this in any of my builds i would always put a qualifier in there right like i appreciate that like this might not work rules is written it might not work at your table talk it over with your dm etc but like but but i i tweeted jeremy crawford a couple of times saying hey like can we get a ruling on this because i was searching on forums on you know 3d6 and reddit and and you know, giants in the playground and things and, and seeing a lot of other people kind of thinking this was maybe possible or that this could be done or can we do this? I don't know arguments, you know what I mean? Um, and, and in one of my videos, I, I said, okay, you guys look like, like we need to get an answer on this. So I'm asking you guys to like tweet about this tweet at Jeremy Crawford and ask him to make a ruling because I'm not getting through to him. Right. And somebody did. One of my one of my one of my viewers did. Um, I can't remember his name now. I, I talked about it, you know, after the fact. Um, but he, Corvus, that was his name, Corvus. He he tweeted at him, and Jeremy Crawford replied, and he's like, "Nope, you can't do it." And then, like, all of a sudden, my Twitter started blowing up, right? And and it was like, "Oh, like he answered, he responded. Oh my gosh, blah blah blah." And so, and of course, he said no, <laughs> which which is fine. And so then I posted like a response video, you know, and I'm like, well, like I was wrong. Hey, but at least we got an answer. I'm thrilled that we got an answer. And so we kind of have sort of a ruling here. And obviously your DM may say that it's still okay, but you know, uh, we're, I'm not gonna try and suggest doing this anymore in my videos going forward and, you know, ate a little bit of humble pie. And and then you you made a you made a reply to it was that or one of these other videos and you're like no you're it like, was that video okay yeah. yeah and you're like yeah. you're like that's why <laughs> you're like that's what like now it makes sense or something like that like yeah. why people have been saying you could do this and it was just hilarious because I saw that and at first of course I was like Triumph <laughs> Triumph Monk replied to one of my videos and then it was like oh crap <laughs> like I felt like I'd been caught by the by the <laughs> rules as written police or something like that. 
um but anyway it was it was funny yeah i, I mean it, it, the the actual interaction itself i think is a you know it's a minor thing whether sure. it is or isn't uh you know uh if we're talking about theoretical stuff mm -hmm. we're talking about stuff that you know is yeah. is dramatic yes. right yes, <laughs> and for sure. it's usually in bad faith yeah right yeah. um and and so i wouldn't call this theoretical but it was just a case where it happened to be i happened to have the other opinion and i was told that that i had said it was that. you yeah. <laughs> you're like no way like there's no way i said that i don't know how you came up with that oh <laughs> yeah. uh, that's funny i'm i'm in utah and I'm, I'm in salt lake city yeah. right in the in the states you're up in canada yep so uh, uh we're, we're in the two whitest places on earth <laughs> yeah Yes, definitely. Yeah. You know, if I if I if I were to drive uh, due north on I fifteen and then cross over the border, eventually I'd, I'd, I'd get to Calgary. You're just kind yeah, of yeah. We're we're right we're now. on the southern end, uh, yeah. as most Canadian cities are. Uh huh. Um, yeah, so uh, we're in the same same time zone. We right. figured that out. Yeah. We love the Rocky Mountains. Yeah. You're, you're actually near Banff, which is yeah. Like we at the top I, I go to Banff my, all the time. That is like at the top of my north american bucket list of places yeah. to visit what what's calgary like well calgary itself is um i mean it's a it's a plain city like uh the we're in the prairies okay. right um so um it there's some hills and stuff but it's uh you know it, you can see banff from from calgary oh. so there's so there's this if you're looking the right direction there's this great a mountain yeah. uh, range that yeah. you can see the Rockies, right? And uh, if you look the other way, there's nothing, right? <laughs> that's that's Saskatchewan that way. Right, right. Um, and uh, we have hot summers, cold winters. Um, it, it's fairly dry, right? Uh, we're we're I'm kind of in the. Uh, it would be relative to the Midwest in in the states. Right? Okay. Got it. Yeah, it, Salt Lake is kind of right nestled in the mountains, and 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 I love it. But I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna get up there one day. Maybe yeah. maybe maybe you can maybe you can you can give me a tour of Banff one, one of these days. And, and I go can, to Banff all the time. Yeah, and we can argue about um about all of my uh, <laughs> all of my poor faith theoretical uh, optimization. <laughs> I haven't seen anything poor faith at this point. <laughs> all right. Okay, so we did a poll. Um, so first, I, uh, we had a conversation about doing a video together because I figure, you know, uh, to a large degree, we have the same audience and to a large degree, we're doing similar content. So I yeah. figured it was a natural collaboration. Yeah. Um, so we talked about it a bit. And we, uh, of course, there's always the hope that there's some viewers of each of our channels that don't know of the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that hopefully probably can... more of your viewers that don't know of me than my viewers that don't know of you. But, but, uh, but thank you, thank you well, for. <laughs> nevertheless, um, and uh, you know the optimization community within Dungeons and Dragons, I think, is not a big community. I think you know of the Dungeons and Dragons community, the optimization one is fairly narrow. So I think we need to stick together, right? Absolutely. Like, yeah. Um, now, uh, so we decided together to do a video where maybe we would both do a build for a particular class mm -hmm. and uh, we were decided to do a poll so we uh, po did a poll on reddit um, that finished about a week ago yeah uh, and the we we had put up that we would either do clockwork soul which i was secretly hoping for <laughs> um mercy monk which i know you were secretly I was, hoping for I was. if for and no other were, reason than to force you to do a monk build <laughs> and those were the two lowest uh on the on the poll by the way yeah I uh I'm but the, the winner was the rune knight that i still wanted to do i wanted to do mm -hmm. a rune knight build um so we agreed we'd both do a rune knight build to level 17 uh that we would allow multi-classing, but at least the majority of levels need to be in Rune Knight. Uh, and then we would do a video where we each present our build um, and we kind of see what maybe we did the same, maybe what we did differently. Um, and then our viewers can see two different ways that you might optimize this, yeah. this subclass, which I think is a really strong fighter subclass uh, absolutely uh, I, I, yeah. I i would i would add i hope that that they can see two different ways my my fear is that we'll end well, up coming up with a, a build that's that's largely similar uh in which case on the one hand it would be like okay well 
you know, like that's almost sort of confirmation that. that so I have this a reason to, to believe it, right? but, we're not going to come up with the same bill good. today. And good. this is my and this is my reason. And this is this is a little strange, but I think it would be unlikely that you would have done your last video uh -huh. if you had come up with the same video <laughs> build I came up with this week. Okay. Uh, because you would be repeating some ideas that okay. I don't think you would have done. Yeah. Uh, so, so I have a strong suspicion we have very different builds. Today. Good. Good. I'm yeah. glad to hear it. And and I think you're right as far as um, the strength of the Rune Knight. You know, a lot of the uh, a lot of the comments on that poll, even though even though the Rune Knight won. It was about 200 votes higher than than the Swarm Keeper Ranger, which I think came in second place. A, a lot of the commenters were like, why is everybody picking Rune Knight? You know, fighters are so boring, uh, do something more interesting. And of course I was like, I was kind of excited. I I, I, I did want the, the Mercy Monk. I love monks, they're my favorite class, even though I, I know that they're pretty underpowered, but, but um, you know. I'll give, was... I'll give it this though. Um, the Mercy Monk, I don't think is underpowered. And I, I'm on I record. Think it's viable. I'm yes. on record. Yeah. yeah. But um, you know, I, I I was thinking, well, gosh, like if if any fighter um subclass is is interesting, um, I think the Rune Knight is is the front runner. I mean, there's others, right? Echo Knight is e e got Echo cool stuff. or Rune. Eldritch I think Eldritch the... Knight yeah. has, you know, some spell casting abilities, things like that. But but yeah, to me, I think I look at the Rune Knight and go, gosh, I mean, there's so many interesting things that you can do with it i mean the runes themselves are great and kind of different but the thing that is particularly unique about it i think is is that ability to increase your size which is which is not real common outside of the enlarge spell right and the um, enlarge in reduce game. it not only uses your action but it also uses your concentration right right and that's right. that's a big deal right yeah. uh the fact that this is concentration free which means it cannot be broken right right yeah, yeah exactly yeah, but uh, so so when I when I'm looking at the when I'm looking at the class the subclass I, I'm I'm kind of initially my thoughts are going, okay, what are some interesting and cool ways that we can take advantage of kind of the the increase in size um, and and also you know the 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 runes obviously the the different uh, bonuses and benefits that they give us that seem to be primarily sort of I guess control or protection type focused so that's yeah kind of yeah it, it's, it. it's not a damage fighter right. right uh like i mean you can do more damage probably with a champion fighter mm -hmm. right uh than than with a rune knight it, most of the the runes are protective in nature right yeah. What, yeah. what's funny about that is um my my second ever video the character build that i did it was a it was a it was a ranged fighter you know fairly simple crossbow you know hand crossbow using um uh, fighter build and i took it so rune knight was in unearthed arcana at the time and i me being a rookie made a rookie mistake of you know saying hey let's 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 use you know rune knight as our subclass um because it does an extra d6 of damage on every single hit and when you're getting four attacks per turn you know seven with with uh with action surge uh, you know that's fantastic. I mean, maybe we even, you know, take a few levels in Ranger and, and pick up, uh, pick up um, Hunter's Mark. Hunter's and, Mark, and then yeah. we're doing 2d6 on, you know, four to, or seven attacks in a round. That's a no brainer, and, and it's great for DPR. And then, of course, you know, Tasha's came out with the with the uh, more balanced version of, of the Rune Knight, and I was like, yeah, I'm never going to go Unearthed Arcana again. <laughs> I, I have a, a personal rule against even reading Unearthed Arcana mm. that I break all, all the time. But sure. but, but uh, I, I try to avoid Unearthed Arcana yeah. because I find that what will happen is you you look at an Unearthed Arcana, Arcana subclass mm -hmm. and then it's like, wow, that's really good. Mm -hmm. That is really tough. And and you kind of like it. Yeah. And, then, and then the official version comes out and of course it has been scale down right and then you think oh they took that away that i don't yeah. like this anymore but i find that if i had not read the unearthed arcana in the right. first place right. and then read that fresh i might have a very different view on it right. and so i found it created a bias that affected the way i i reviewed subclasses so mm -hmm. i try to avoid unearthed arcana now um in fact i probably re read maybe a third of unearthed arcana at best um yeah. And that way, when 
they, the subclass comes out. I read the Rune Knight and I go, that is incredible. And then people say, you don't mind the nerfs? And I'm like, you know, uh, oh, they nerfed it? Yeah. It was it was tougher than this? <laughs> <laughs> Except for in the case of the, uh, of the uh, famously for you, uh, the Peace and Twilight clerics. Yeah, well, yeah, they went the other direction. Right. I had to, in that case, I actually had to go back to Unearth mm -hmm. Arcana because I'm like, did they nerf it, this? It, it, you know, yeah. Well, <laughs> this well, is what overpowered. I, I, I assumed. I'm like, they clearly didn't nerf anything from right. an Arthur mm -hmm. Kana, and how could they play test this and come to the conclusion that it's okay? Mm -hmm. And so I went and went back to the Arthur Kana and like, oh no, the Arthur Kana version didn't even have that. They added it for <laughs> the official. It. You know, yeah, um, yeah it, it, insane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I honestly, I truly would. I said that in the video, but. I truly would have loved to have been a fly in the wall just to know that conversation. I think right. it would, I'd learned so much about where they're coming from. Right. When they decided, you know, let's have the peace cleric, you know, teleport people in, uh, you know, and or out and get uh, free and, and, bless at level one. And... and so everyone can just share hit points. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, I, I, I and, and you know what? That is so, I'm so certain that that is no problem that we're not going to even put it in an art we'll just we're just throw gonna it on there really it, it. it we'll put it in a book yeah, yeah. <laughs> like i just i i don't know how that ever could have happened with people who understand the game at all right. um you know and i know the designers play uh you know it's just it, this was just like this one strange thing well don't get upset with me when i eventually do a, a twilight cleric build Oh, uh, I, I won't. Uh, yeah, it's it's official rules. I yeah. mean, I won't do a Twilight Cleric build because, you know, just personally, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't like the. Uh, but, you know, uh, it's in the rules. So I, you know, people are going to use it. Of course they are. Yeah. Right? yeah. I get a lot of requests for it, and then inevitably, I'll get the request, and then somebody responding to that request and saying, "Don't do it. <laughs> it's broken." Well, you know what? You know what? Do it. And if people yeah. don't want to use it, they don't have to use it. Right? Yeah, like exactly. I, I say this about things I do all the time. You know, you don't want that one? No problem. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm not telling you it. you have to do any of these things. Right, yeah. right. Uh, okay, so let's let's start talking about what we came up with and let's see where we might have come with same conclusions and different conclusions. I think with Rune Knight, kind of the obvious thing is grappling. Uh, so I, I'm curious how big a part that plays in your build. Um, so tell us a little bit about what you came up with. Okay. So so you're right. I think I think grappling is obvious, and um, I think because of the video that I released, uh, you know, my, my last build, um, which did a lot of grappling, I kind of went, I'm going to try to go somewhere else with this. Um, not because, you know, it's the best way to play it. I don't know that I, I, I don't happen to believe that there's a, like a best way to kind of do anything really. Um, well, that's not true, but you know what I mean? Um, the most important thing is, is have fun and let's explore you know, uh, picking a sort of a theme or uh, whatever, a, a role for a character, and then try to, you know, kind of make that as strong as possible. Um, and so I, 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 I didn't go grappling at all here. Um, I looked for other ways to um, sort of take advantage, I guess, of, of the large size. And to me, what um, seemed really cool and, f and potentially fun and interesting here was to try to create a character that had um, sort of as much reach as possible um, and, and kind of try to control the battlefield via um, the long arm of the law, as it were. Uh, okay. so, so this guy is, he's, he's, he's Mr. Fantastic. He's Dalsim, um, Stretch Armstrong. I don't know what name I'm gonna come up with yet, but, but the basic concept is, you know, building, uh, well, someone who, who just has, who, who can attack, you know, all across the battlefield, essentially. And then also, um, and, and, and thereby sort of the focus is to try and control snare, stop, uh, lock people down to try and protect the backline kind of thing. I, I almost feel like 
the, the version of the rune knight that I came up with would be best served by playing with a party that's like all ranged, except you. And they all kind of stand five or 10 feet behind you and you're you're playing space invaders, right? The old arcade game where you're you're stopping and slowing and snaring as many targets as you can while, while your friends behind you are all just picking them off before, as the line slowly advances and you try and kill them all before they get to you kind of thing. Um, with, with, coupled with uh, some nice, uh, some pretty nice DPR, particularly later, and even, um, you know, semi-sustainable area of effect uh, DPR, coupled with your snaring and slowing and, and things like that. So that's that's sort of the, the theme, the concept for, for what, I, what I came up with. Okay, so- um... you? Yeah, so I I have created a character. Uh, his name is Will Mamu, and uh, I don't want to spoil too much. But uh, one of the things I did with this character is uh, it has two feats. We'll both agree that those feats are both good feats, but you would almost never see them on the same build. Cool. Uh, so uh, yeah, that was something I found a way around. Um, Will is also going to be a controller uh, of the battlefield, okay. uh, focusing on reach and area <laughs> of effects and uh, keeping and keeping enemies away from the allies. All right. Um, so we, it turns out we, our goals are going to be very close. Okay. Um, and and like with yours, dishes out reasonably good damage. Is good, of course, at mitigating damage. I mean, for, in terms of grappling, I think it's built in. Right. Yeah, I don't think you need sure. to focus, right? We're, okay. you know, you get big, you have advantage. We're going to be strength builds, I assume, mm -hmm. both of us. Um, so we're going to be good at grapple. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think if you want to grapple, you're going to be good at it. So yeah. I don't think you need to be uh, built around that. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think in terms of role, we have come up with very similar things. So and, and that's, that's uh, I'll be not too surprising, to right? You you look at you look at all yeah. those runes, and like you said, it's just like, man, they're they're snaring, they're redirecting attacks, they're charming, they're imposing disadvantage. I mean, this is this is a character that's built to to protect and and control. So I immediately have a guess what your race is. I'm gonna guess bugbear. You can tell me when when we get there, but that's yep. that's immediately my guess at the way you were talking about it. Of course, of course. Um, so so let's get into the builds. Okay. Uh, so uh, I personally went back and forth on race quite a bit, and I actually yeah. was strongly considering bugbear, mm -hmm. um, and I decided not to do bugbear because it left a weakness in my build okay. that I just couldn't ignore, uh, okay. and. The only way to fix that weakness was one more feat. So I'm going to actually do my first custom lineage build. Hmm. Um, yeah, so I, I came up with a lineage. Uh, the idea is that uh, his mother, Linea, uh, Lydia Mamu, was a fallen Azamar blackguard. And uh, she was rec recruited by like this fiendish host to fight the forces of Groomsh in the uh, infinite battlefields of Archeron or Acheron. Um, and her son was born changed by the plane he was born on and the environment uh, so that he is like this living embodiment of battle. And naturally, I'll be putting the plus two into strength. And uh, we'll start out with pole art master, right? And get Gotta that reach right master. away yeah. and get the extra attack right away and get, and this will be very important for the build, especially later on getting that attack of opportunity when they come into reach. Yeah. Uh, so what did you end up starting with? So you're right. I, I did go bugbear. And what's funny is I, I went back and forth too. And one of the main reasons why I went bugbear is because I so often go variant human and custom lineage, you know, between the two of them. Because th this this build, I take three feats on. And it was, it's so painful to delay, right? To delay those feats. The, the nice thing is we are a fighter. And so we do get, you know, obviously more ASI. They, they come feats. eventually. Yes. Yep. So, you know, I thought, gosh, maybe I should go variant human or uh, or custom lineage just because, yeah, I, you know, I really like to kind of get the jump um, in my in my builds and be strong as soon as possible and not, yeah. you know, eventually. Um, but but again, in the interest of, I, I use this phrase a lot in my videos, in the interest of sort of you know, exploring what's possible, right? And sort of stretching 
uh, the the limit to what we can try and achieve here. Um, I said, yeah, let's just go bugbear and 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 be I, as I, long armed as possible. I think there's something to be said for looking at a race and then thinking, now how can I make this race good, mm -hmm. rather than always the concept and what race works best right. for the concept. Right, right, right. Um, and and bugbear if if you're wanting to make a reach character, um, that's going to be the best way you can use a bugbear. Right. right. So yeah. So I I didn't actually write too much of a backstory here. So I'm impressed that that you've gone that far. Usually I like to work in a little RP uh, into my into my characters, but this time. Well, I'm I like, figure if I'm if I'm going basics. to if I'm going to take custom lineage, I had to <laughs> yeah, I had to do that. Story. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just I'm taking custom lineage because feet, right? Because <laughs> I mean, what other reason do you need? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're we're a okay. bugbear. Uh, you got your your plus two into strength, obviously, um, and then the plus one into constitution. Um, so you know, I'm gonna be at uh, assuming point by right, fifteen strength plus two, so seventeen. So whoa, whoa. you're changing the dexterity bonus to constitution bonus. Correct. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, uh, I think I think using that Tasha's is the smart the smart way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, constitution plus one. I would also then advise going with a charisma of fourteen due to um, a multi class that we're going to be dipping into. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, what starting ability scores then? Uh, how does it work? Yeah. So uh, so all across the board. So 15 strength plus two, 15 con plus one, uh, 14 charisma, and then of course you're not left with much. So, uh, you know, I, I guess I'm probably going what 10 wisdom uh, for the for the for the saving throw, um, and then I think I have to go eight, you know, uh, eight intelligence and eight dexterity, which is uh, not great. But fortunately, we'll be heavy armor wearers, so we don't need our dexterity quite as much. So uh, I went in a similar direction, but there are some some pretty uh, some differences I note here. Yeah. Uh, so our strength is going to start the same. I'm starting 15 becomes a 17. Um, I'm going for dexterity of 10. Uh, so uh, like you, it's not a priority. Mm -hmm. My constitution is lower than yours. I'm going 14 on the constitution, uh, so I will have a little bit less hit points. Um, intelligence is going to be nine. <laughs> I'm going wisdom 11 and there's mm. a reason for that I'll, I'll explain later and a charisma of 13 so I assume we are both going to be multi-classing uh, with a charisma based um, class uh, so it'll be interesting to see if it's the same class or different classes I bet it will <laughs> <laughs> we'll see uh, but you know with charisma there's so many options it wouldn't surprise me at all if it's different yeah that's true uh, we'll see uh, okay, okay. Uh, so the rest of the, the level for level one, um, so I'm starting with fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, I've got the polar master. I'm going to use a halberd, but you could use a glaive. doesn't matter. Um, but of course, that gives us our bonus action attack. And ideally, we should also get more opportunity attacks when you have polar master, especially mm -hmm. with reach. Um, and we're going to really lean into the opportunity attacks later. Uh, the fighting style I'm going to start with, and, and I say start with because I'm going to change it out later, but I'm going to grab throwing weapons. Um, and I think they're just, you know, if if something is out of reach, I mean, that's the one thing with the melee fighter yeah, is that sometimes uh, things are far away and yeah. are, are uh, too far for you to get to. Right. Uh, so it gives me a, just a little bit more in those cases, though. I didn't think the fighting style was all that important. I figured defense was a reasonably good option sure. as well. Um, and uh, we're going to throw on the chainmail armor and uh, be a pretty good hitter right at level one. Uh, now, we talked a little bit about measuring damage um, mm -hmm. for, for our various builds, and we kind of decided, and people are going to be at, uh, thinking about this already, we decided we're each going to use our own method for right. determining damage for these builds because this is not a competition, right? right? And And the way we determine damage is so dramatically different mm -hmm. that I think it becomes really impossible to, sure. to, to create a competition based on the numbers sure. we're going to share. Uh, but uh, if, if you know my channel, you already know how I determine damage. If you don't know my channel, I post links to how my damage is determined and what it all means in my video descriptions. Um, but 
at level one, the DPR for this character is 8.8, .8, which is a 54% increase over the baseline, which means damage at first level, very strong. How did you do it? What did you do for first level? So, um, yeah, so fighter, bugbear, um, we went over to ability scores, uh, equipment, same thing, you know, chain mail and a halberd or a glaive. I like glaives better. I like the look of the, the sword on a stick. As I, see more, to I see more stick. glaives, yeah. <laughs> um, for my fighting style, actually, I, I went with interception. Um, that's new in Tasha's, for those who don't know. I, I like it, you know, there's protection as well, which which you can, as a reaction, impose disadvantage on an attack made against an ally who's within five feet of you. I, I prefer interception. Um, Especially at low level. Exactly. At level, at level one, interception's yeah. quite potent. I mean, it's a, it's protection a, is never that great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a D10, uh, right? A D10 uh, plus your fighter level, uh, reducing the damage you use it as a reaction. Um, it, you know, again, just kind of sticking with the protector type theme. Um, ideally, you know, you're not going to have a lot of allies close to you that are getting attacked uh, with this build, but it'll happen, especially if you have ranged enemies, you know, and, and it would work if they're shooting a bow at your friend who's standing next to you, you can, you can still intercept that damage. Um, and so I also, though, am going to change it out later uh, because we're going to have too many, too many demands on our reaction. That's one um, of the nice things about Tashes is now you can change your fighting yep. style whenever you gain an ability score increase. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, we'll be swapping it, but uh, but that's where I'm at for now. I don't I don't calculate damage until I, I just do it for those who are familiar know this, but those who aren't, um, I, I I I have a very different approach, which is basically to calculate damage at six level six, level nine, level 13, and level 17. And I just do a damage report and kind of say, okay, against an enemy with a 10 armor class, uh, your damage is X. At 15 armor class, it's Y. And then, you know, I go 10 armor class and 16 armor class, 10 armor class and 17 armor class, 10 armor class and 18 armor class as we level up, just to kind of give you an idea of, okay, if everything hit basically, which is, you know, a 10 armor class, it's not everything, but you know, most of your attacks hit against an easy target, target your X um, against, you know, something a little more reasonable that you're probably going to be facing at this level, you know, it's Y. And uh, yeah, just kind of give people an idea as to what their average DPR may be um, based on their level and the enemy AC. So, okay. so I don't have anything are, to report on at level one. But we're both going to give a picture of how much damage these characters uh, do. Uh, yeah. So you can check them both out. But you yeah, find me, it hard to compare. So uh, <laughs> it's easy at this level. You win because you have Polar Master. <laughs> yeah, but, I, um, I, th I think there's no question at level one yeah. my character's doing more damage Absolutely. because I went with. And that's the thing is if you were going with a martial character, and you don't go custom lineage or variant human, uh, you pay that price of it's mm -hmm. a little bit tougher from levels mm -hmm. one through four. Yeah, for That's sure. Just the way it is. Yeah. Um, and I was going to mention for those who who are interested, I also will post links in my video description to like graphs uh, that I that I post that kind of chart uh, the damage per round of a character, or the survivability per round, uh, or you know as the case may be. Uh, depending on you know what type of character what, build what I'm kind, doing, for what you're week. doing, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's go through build levels two through five. Uh, so let's start with you. Okay. Uh, tell us what happens with your character. Yeah, let's let's hit some highlights. So level two action surge, obviously one of the strongest abilities in the game. That'll be really nice later for, for especially as we as we start to rely on it for um, kind of getting our. Rotation spell going, spell casting, exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, so level three, of course, you get your martial archetype, your uh, your uh, subclass. We're going rune knight. Um, and we have to choose a couple of runes, right? We get two runes to pick, and they reset on a short rest. So you get to use them once, and they reset on a short rest. I, I'm going to be honest with you. This is one of the toughest decisions, I think, for me, because there's so many good ones. You think oh, it's no. easy. I I... I... The first one, to me, there's no question. There's, so, there's one that I think stands out. Okay. Uh, and of the other ones, there, there was one I definitely felt fit better. What I think both For of what us you're wanted trying to do. do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going Cloud Rune, um, which is, of course, just, it's awesome because there's no roll, there's no saving throw, there's nothing, right? An enemy makes an attack, and you just, as a reaction, it hits somebody else, right? Um, which is so strong, not only to protect your your allies or yourself, I guess, um, but to do 
potentially really great damage to an enemy, right? Um, so yeah, you got to go cloud rune. And then I went fire, uh, fire rune for the second one, because again, you know, with the focus on snaring, slowing, etc. The great thing about fire rune is that it doesn't take my reaction that one, yes. one, one kind of weakness almost with this build is there's going to be so many demands, so many great options for a reaction. Um, and so with fire rune on a hit, um, they they have to make a strength. Well, they're going to take 2d6 extra damage, but then they got to make a strength saving throw against your con. And that's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure I had a higher con was because your saving throw for, for these rune knight abilities um, is based on your constitution, right? Um, so that bumps our DC just a little bit. But anyway, if they fail the strength save, then their movement speed is zero for one minute. And then at the end of each of their turns, they get to renew that saving throw, obviously, to try and get to, to get to break out of it. But uh, just a really strong, a really strong, strong snare. Um, and then, of course, we have the Giant's Might ability. Uh, as a bonus action, you get to increase your size by one. So we're a medium character, we're now large. You get to do this proficiency bonus times per day. So initially, just a couple of times, but you know, I think eventually, it depends on the table. I know that when you do your, um, that when you do your damage report comparisons, right, against baseline, you're assuming is it eight encounters? Uh, uh, my mine is long rest. almost ridiculously hard. It's one yeah. of those things that if I could go back in time, I would have made it easier. But if I make it easier now, then then it you're comparing up. apples and oranges, yeah, exactly. right? But exactly. yeah, I assume eight encounters a day, one short rest, four rounds per okay. encounter. I'm glad I don't yeah. play that that table. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've run sessions that have done that, um, you know. Uh, yeah. So. It, it ha I mean, it depends on your table, but it, it varies from table to table. I've, sure. I've kind of asked people to, to comment, and it seems like the majority of my viewers anyway, at least those who have commented, uh, experience something similar to what I experience, which is generally two to four encounters per long rest. Um, yeah, so I think I, that's closer to average. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I think, you know, eventually um, we can kind of assume that we'll most people will have, you know, Giants Might available for most, if not all of their combat encounters in a day. Um, but anyway, you grow in size, um, you get to do 1d6 uh, extra damage on the first creature that you hit in your turn. So it's just once, unlike on the, in the Unearthed Arcana, it was just an extra d6 on every attack that you made. Um, you get advantage on strength checks and saves when you're higher. So obviously, again, for grappling, it's just it's it's easy, right? Um, but uh, but for me, you know, I think at this level, okay, now when when I use this, thanks to Bugbear, your your reach is going to be massive. It's going to be uh, an, you know eight by eight on a grid essentially um, that you'll be able to control. Um, at level four, you, you know, an ability score increase your feet. Polearm Master, I think, has got to be the first one that you take. If you're using a polearm, you can't not get this feat almost. I mean, a bonus action, you know, weapon attack that that takes advantage of your strength uh, score for, you know, damage and things is just it's just a no-brainer. And then, of course, the, the most valuable uh, for this build, I think, uh, aspect of that feat is what you've already alluded to, that you get to make opportunity attacks on a creature when they enter your uh, reach, which is just really important um so yeah that's uh, that's four and then at level five you get extra attack okay uh yeah i we have made a number of similar decisions mm -hmm. um so i am also straight fighter to level five i think this is i think it's a hard um decision to make to go from fighter before five mm -hmm. uh of the various jump points we see from fighter uh, you sell the maybe level two if you're just dipping fighter, right? But uh, if you're making primarily a fighter, you uh, you're, not multi, you're not multi classing before level five for sure. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. so same thing. Uh, yeah, action surge, extra attack. I picked up cloud rune, which is amazing, and fire rune. And the thing about fire rune is, of course, because it doesn't use our reaction, we can do it at the same time as we do an opportunity attack. So if something's moving into our reach, we make our opportunity attack with Polar Master, apply the fire rune, no, and stuck. they're stuck 10 mm -hmm. feet from us. Yeah, um, so that uh, was definitely appealing. Never mind the fact it does some extra damage that they don't get a save for. Right. Um, 
at fourth level, I pick up the slasher feat. Uh, and this goes nicely with Halberd, though it would work with Glaive as well. Um, and what it does is, of course, if you hit with uh, your weapon, you can, um, once per turn, uh, give a minus 10 to movement speed, um, which is more useful if you're fighting with reach. Uh, because if you want to hit somebody and then move to a position where they can't get to you, uh, that movement penalty can be very important. Um, but also, Slasher has the best if you score a critical yeah. portion of it, as far as I'm concerned. Um, because it gives that creature a disadvantage on all their mm -hmm. attacks, um, which I really like. So when we score a critical, we get a really nice effect. And of course, then it allows me to increase my strength to 18, which is, of course, increases your chance to hit and your damage a bit. Um, and so we end up with about 20 DPR on mine, which is about 17% over baseline. So we're still comfortably over baseline. Nice. Uh, but yeah, it looks like at level five, our builds are going to be working very similarly, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I think one thing, I, I mean, although you mentioned you're kind of afraid we come with the same build, I think one thing this does do is it kind of confirms that we have two sets of eyes looking at the same things. If we see the same things, then that I think that makes a confirmation that that is probably pretty good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no question. There, there, there's, there's some, some comfort in uh, having your opinion confirmed. <laughs> yeah, if nothing else. So hopefully we'll, 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 we'll fork a little, a little more eventually. Well, we'll, we'll see. We're, because potentially right, right now, as we get into level six through ten, I think this is where there's really a possibility that yeah. we might be doing different things. Um, if you do exactly the same thing, I will be shocked. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'll be hurt, but I'll be shocked. <laughs> Uh, well, one thing I know you won't do is at level six, my character is going to be shoring up that thing that I couldn't do if I was a bugbear. And that's why I think that you probably didn't do it. I'm going to take a feat and it's going to be resilient wisdom. Because if you want to protect your party and you get shut down, then you're not protecting your party. And if you have a bad wisdom save, and, and here's the thing about indomitable. Um, if you needed a 20 to save, and you have a re-roll, the re-roll is useless. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so I couldn't, it, it bothered me to put out a, uh, to, to, to ignore the wisdom save. Hmm. So um, that's why I went custom lineage is for the wisdom save. Uh, and that's why I went with an 11 wisdom. So it goes to 12 plus proficiency, plus proficiency. And at the end of the day, this character will end up with a wisdom save that is pretty much as good as their, you know, their other primary saves yeah um close anyway uh close enough that if they do fail that indomitable is going to make a big difference right um so i i just that was a weakness of the build that um this the custom lineage fixed and that's so you have to make your decision i mm -hmm. i considered bugbear strongly anyway so you know it's the reach or the wisdom yeah. Yeah. um and i think you know you you have to make your own decisions um with level seven course we get another uh, i'm continue with rune knight we get another feat uh or not another feat another rune and the rune i think you'd be crazy not to take is hill rune i expect you took the same thing um gives you uh a resistance to poison damage um and uh it advantage on poison saves and you can use a bonus action and be resistant to bludgeoning piercing and slashing so basically you're ripping off uh, rage, right? Uh, yeah. Without without the downside, right? Right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, really, really good rune. Uh, yeah. I'd be surprised if you don't take it. Um, at level eight, then I went for my first multi-class level, uh, and this is just going to be a one-level dip to start with. Mm -hmm. And I'll be and this is where I think I'm going to do something that you're probably not going to do. Okay. So, uh, you talked a little bit about the possibility in your last build of uh -huh. multi-classing Rune Knight with Genie Patron. Uh -huh. uh, so I'm multi-classing Rune Knight with Genie oh, Patron. Good, something which, different. Which is what? <laughs> which is why I laughed when I saw your last video. <laughs> I'm like, oh no! And I'm like, but there's no way he's doing it again. You, there's you no know, way. Uh, yeah, that's funny because I did. Yeah. Didn't I, didn't I? Did I? I mentioned right. I'm like, uh, you know, Triant Monk and I are going to do a Rune Knight build, so like, I'm not going to talk about going Rune Knight, and, and even though it's a good option. And you were going to go Fiend Pact, but you said you might go Genie Pact and right. you might go uh, Freet, right? right? I'm not going a Freet. I'm okay. going 
down. Yeah, I, I was gonna go with Freed yeah. for for the for a spell that I needed. Yeah, for yeah, that for, build yeah, on. and and but, uh, it was appropriate for that build. But yeah. for this build, I want Dao because what Dao is gonna do for me is um, well, first off, Genie is a good warlock subclass. If you mm -hmm. don't know that, I've got videos, and then <laughs> I bet you've talked about it as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, it is uh, tempting to go hexblade. With this build, but it's always Dao, to go hex play. <laughs> Dao does something nice for you. Uh, well, first you get your your uh, little sanctuary, and that is uh, basically it's a bag of holding on steroids. You can fit the treasure of many many dragons within there and hold it and walk around no problem. Yeah, um, and it has other uses as well. Uh, but we also get uh, the additional damage, which is uh, we add our proficiency bonus to the damage we do on our turn. And in this case, it's bludgeoning, which means at level eight, I can now take the crusher feat. And now I have slasher and crusher on the same build. Um, strength goes to 19. Now I hit you and I move you and slow you. And if you're critted, you're screwed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now these are these are feats you would not normally see on the same build, but um, this build will be able to deliver bludgeoning and slashing damage awesome. with their attacks. Yeah. So we're going to do crusher and slasher and get all the bonuses from each of them right. on our attacks. So that's level nine character. That's, that's level that's eight. That's level fighter. nine. Yes, level eight fighter, level nine for the character. And this is also the point where I'm switching my thrown weapon. Uh, fighting style to uh, the superior technique fighting style, which allows you to pick a battle master uh, maneuver, and I'll be taking pushing attack. Uh, okay. So we'll be interested to see. Uh, I assume you, uh, but from the look on your reaction. face, <laughs> that, you're, that you're also switching to a maneuver. We'll see if it's the same maneuver, but I'm going pushing attack. Pushing attack, of course, adds the maneuver dice to the damage, and then they make a save versus your strength. This character has good strength. Um, or they're pushed 15 feet back, which is going to set up a power move for us. Um, and at level 10, then back to Rune Knight, uh, and we'll be Rune Knight 9, Warlock 1. The genie pack at this point is four extra damage. That's going to be basically Fishes. per round, because you're yeah. going to hit probably at least once. Yeah. Um, I should mention that um, when I talk about damage, uh, I assumed... I'm going to get one extra attack of opportunity per battle. Mm. Uh, but at this point, I just think this is a really conservative estimate. Um, this character is going to be large sized. And so when you have a reach weapon, uh, that is a six square corridor that we can completely block, right? Uh, enemies that move in are hit with opportunity attacks, pushed back and slowed. Um, and then if we want, we can throw a fire rune on top. Uh, and, you know, our control is going to get a lot better eventually, but it's humming nicely right away. Um, now we'll grab Armor of Agathis and Hex for now. Uh, we'll switch out Hex later, uh, but for now against like a big enemy, it's a bit of a damage boost. We're not much of a caster at yeah. this point, and we'll never be much of a caster. Uh, but you know what? We're not concentrating on anything else. We've got a good constitution saving throw, so why not? Why not? Um, yeah, and in terms of defense, built up nicely with the hill rune and with resilient wisdom. And our damage now is at 24.19, which is 37% of our baseline. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're coming along quite nicely. Nice. What did you do from six to 10? Yeah, that, I, I love, I have to say, I love the, the warlock move with the genie and the bludgeoning with crusher. That's super cool. Cause, Thank cause you. now not only snaring, but pushing back is, is big just to, again, keep people at bay and away from your friends. Um, well, I'll, really I'll cool. point out that in some ways it creates more similarity between our builds mm -hmm. because we'll both have that ability to hit somebody and, and hitting them with them 15 feet from us. Right, 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 yeah. right. So yeah, so I, I had to delay my multi-classing a little bit further than yours because I'm not very inhuman, right? Yeah. So I went at level six um, for for the ability score increase for feet. I actually went Sentinel. I, I waffled I, I a little that. bit between Sentinel and, um, and Slasher, which I'm gonna get eventually. So you could kind of do either because having that 17 strength score just, it's like a, it just bugs me. Thorn in your side, yeah. <laughs> it does. But anyway, Sentinel, because of course, you know, when you make an opportunity attack, it 
you know, reduces their speed to zero. So that's just one more way for us to sort of stop them in their tracks. And then of course you do get the other benefits, right? Where um, if, if, a, if a creature, if an enemy, uh, you know, is within five feet of you, and it's too bad it's not within your reach, but because hopefully you're not going to have an enemy within five feet of you very often, but if they attack uh, an enemy or sorry, an ally, uh, then you can you can use your reaction to make an attack against them. Right? And, and that explains to me why you're going to be switching out. Uh, you talked about interception, yes, but interception and uh, sentinel are redundant, right? Um, so it, it now I understand yeah. why why you're making yeah, that switch. And, and and so uh, at this level, I would swap uh, I would swap it out to. Um, also the uh martial versatility or sorry using the martial versatility feature from tasha superior technique superior yeah. technique um to pick up the maneuver and i think i'm probably going goading attack okay um because that's essentially a, a, a taunt Fits with your as protector we like to say. theme yeah, yeah exactly so yeah. you know once uh, you know you only get you only get you know this maneuver once per short rest unfortunately but you know just another ability to uh, kind of protect your allies, right? So you use goading attack and um, you hit the enemy and now they have disadvantage on attacks against anyone other than you. Um, they, they get to make a wisdom save against your con DC. Again, another reason why I wanted a high con. Um, lunging attack would be hilarious just because it would extend yeah. your reach five feet further, but but it would that, practically be arranged. Character. Yeah, that yeah. felt that felt ridiculous at this point. Um, so so at level six, really quick, I'll do a, a damage report for for this character. I'm assuming that um, you're you're using giant's might, but I'm actually not going to assume an opportunity attack. Um, you'll obviously get a lot of them ideally, and so that's going to increase your damage per round. Um, and I'm not going to sort of make an assumption that you're using Action Surge or Fire Rune, obviously, because those are very limited resources. Um, but at this level, uh, against an enemy with a 10 armor class, you'd be doing 24 damage per round with your Giant's Might up. Uh, against an enemy with a 15 armor class, it's 18 damage per round. So not amazing. Um, okay, and obviously potentially higher when you're getting those opportunity attacks on your turn, etc. I, I think it would be very likely that our characters, um, just from the ways they're built the same, would be seeing a lot of, at least one yes. per, per combat, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, and just because, uh, you know, we're covering, especially if we've got Giant Spite active, um, where it's very huge. likely to get to any party member. Yes. They're going to have to come through our reach and take that opportunity attack. Right. And I really think that one is a conservative estimate. Yeah. Yeah, I um, think yeah. for as far as technique goes here, really what you're doing is kind of ideally sort of stepping up, making your attack at the at the end of your reach, right, and then stepping five feet back and waiting for them to move up speaking on their of, turn and hit them. Speaking of opportunity attacks, I want to discuss. Uh, so I took pushing attack. Mm -hmm. uh, now I understand exactly why you took goading attack because yeah. it works perfectly for your protective style. Yeah. Um, I am working a little more on pushing and control, controlling moving, the, the enemy, yeah. and I want to discuss my power move. Okay. Okay. So, let's say an enemy does uh, walk into my uh, area of ten feet around me. Mm -hmm. um, this is what could happen to them. Uh, so I make my opportunity attack and hit. Okay. So what I would do is I would apply the uh, superiority die. Um, so I'm doing extra damage from that. Uh, and then I would move them with the crusher feet. Uh, and the crusher feet does not have the wording that a lot of force movement does, that it has to be horizontal. So they will be moving up and towards me by five feet. Nice. And then I will be instituting the pushing attack, pushing them 15 feet diagonally upwards uh, they will end up 20 feet in the air, land Take some fall damage, and land prone, That's and awesome. be and be slowed by 10 feet. Yeah, uh, and so 2d6, then, 2d6 falling damage. And by the time they get back up, they're going to have very little movement left. Uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, and maybe apply a fire rune on top of that. Just sure. So yeah. now they're now now they're snared. So that's the power move. I love it. 
Um, yeah, so the thing that I love about about this character here, and, and really from here, from, from very early on, right, when you activate your giant's might, thanks to your 15 feet of attack range because of the bugbear and the polearm, now you are, you're essentially, you know, you're, you're a four square on a grid, right? And 15 feet in every direction. It's an, it's an eight by eight on the map where, you know, you'd step up, make an, I, mean, I just envision this character again, like, I would know, imagine Mr. Fantastic, Reed Richards, right? Just it would be very, the battlefield. it would be a very rare, certainly if you're indoors, uh, I could imagine very few fights where you wouldn't be able to attack any creature in the room. Right. Oh, right. For like, sure. Yeah. Because yeah, that bugbear on top of it. Because the thing about um, threaten, threatening areas is that uh, when you increase in size, um, you actually increase the number of squares that you threaten as well. Yep. Um, even though it's 10 feet around you, because it's a bigger base, it ends up being more squares. Uh, and then you put uh, the additional five feet from bugbear on top of that, then you're getting way more squares of potential attack than a bugbear would normally get. Right. Right. Yeah. So at level seven, you get your third rune. Like you mentioned, I think you have to go hill. I mean, you know, free resistance uh, is is just so hard to pass up, uh, and you know, poison too. So um, I, I I did debate actually because I think at this level it's kind of like, well, gosh, maybe I'm not going to be hit, getting hit that often if you know we're doing our job of snaring and slowing and you know, otherwise controlling. But with things like goading attack, especially, it's kind of like, I'm really incentivizing the enemies to make attacks against me. And frankly, I don't have a really high armor class, right? We're not using shields or anything here. Nope. Um, hopefully we have plate mail by now, but in that case, we're an 18 armor class because, you know. Um, so yeah, going hill. So we have cloud rune. That's true, uh, obviously. So if they make a big hit on us, especially if they crit us, you know, hopefully we haven't used our reaction yet and we can <laughs> force that to go somewhere else. Um, so at level eight, I'm still in fighter because I need that extra feat. You know, again, I, I, I didn't I didn't go with my custom lineage or variant human. Um, so I also got slasher here. Um, so finally, at level eight, I've got an 18 strength to round off that odd number um, for the extra damage, better hits, etc. Um, and then, as you mentioned, you know, once per turn, when you hit uh, someone with a slashing attack, which we do, then they're slowing them. So it's just one more way for us to kind of slow and, and kind of control the battlefield. And in your case, potentially slowing them at a greater range mm -hmm. because of the bugbear reach. Yeah, at 20 yeah. feet out, right? Yeah. If you've got Giant's Might up. Um, so that's really going to, you know, if minus 10 on somebody with a 30 foot movement speed, they could maybe get to you, but but nobody they're, else they're dashing to get to anybody else yeah. and then they're not attacking right yeah. exactly um at level nine i did do some multi-classing so i'm starting my sojourn into sorcerer actually so we're going sorcerer one here um you know i was tempted to just push on to fighter 11 for obvious reasons but I, I, since since sustained damage wasn't really the focus of the build here i kind of wanted to just delay those fighter levels and that extra damage with that extra attack um, to focus on increasing my reach even further, just because why not? Uh, and then giving me some kind of fun, semi-sustainable area of effect damage uh, that will also increase eventually anyway our control. Um, so uh, we're going for our sorceress origin. Uh, we're taking Divine Soul. Um, it's hard not to go Divine Soul, especially if you're dipping. If you're, yeah, I think Divine Soul is one of those things that is hard not to do if you're going a little bit of Sorcerer. If yeah. you're going more Sorcerer, I can see Clockwork or sure. whatever in mind. But, sure. Yeah. But yeah, getting access to all the Cleric spells, uh, spell list is just huge. And, and there's actually a couple of them that we want. So uh, that's going to be good for us. Favorite of the Gods is nice. Um, it's really just, good. I would say the big thing for your build here is that you don't have the good wisdom save mm -hmm. and it can be applied to saves. Yes, for sure. 2D, so an extra 2D4. 2D4 yeah, it could Absolutely. be very important on a wisdom save for yep. your character. Yep. Yeah. So great for saves. You know, when you fail a save or miss an attack, you can add 2D4 to it. Uh, only is it once per short rest? Once it's per once per long, short rest. Once per short rest, yeah. It's short. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we'll be able to use it hopefully a couple, three times a day, depending on your table, obviously. Um, and then, right, you get access to the cleric spell list when you gain levels in sorcerer. So at level one, we, we, 
we only get one spell from the sorcerer list, depending on if we go law, chaos, good, you know, et cetera. Um, I'd, I'd suggest going law so that we can get bless and, and there's a good use of our concentration. Um, obviously, you know, one of the best, maybe the best level one buff anyway. Um, and it never gets bad. Yeah, at exactly. Any level. A yeah. D4 to any attacker saving throw for you and two of your friends or, you know, three of your friends, I guess. Um, that's just really strong. Um, and we, we're not concentrating otherwise yet. Uh, so, you know, that would be a great use. As a cantrip, I, I, I might take Booming Blade. I don't know that I would actually use it all that often, but having one more way to discourage someone from moving away from you and towards an ally, you know, assuming that somebody actually gets up to you because they have to be within five feet, uh, unfortunately. I, I took Booming Blade too. I didn't even yeah. mention it because yeah, I think yeah. with cantrips, it's like, none of them are going to make it we're, we're right. not concentrating on right. charisma <laughs> so yeah. there's not yeah. much we're going to do with yeah. cantrips yeah. i actually am going to take a, a a charisma based cantrip that i that i really like um in a minute here but uh but not yet a again same thing with other spells it's like uh, absorb elements shield they're great but i'm not going to have enough reactions to ever reliably use those right so um I, I would almost say, you know, take sort of out of combat uh, utility type spells, detect magic. Another quick damage report at level nine, uh, assuming that I've got bless on myself at this point, but not much else has changed for our DPR um, other than our strength went up by one, our proficiency bonus went up by one. So against an enemy at a 10, with a 10 armor class, you're doing 28 damage per round. Against an enemy with a 16 armor class, it's 23 damage per round. So a little bit better. Um, but then at level 10, I went sorcerer too. And uh, we get Font of Magic, so two Sorcerer points that I can't really do a lot with right now other than convert them into spell slots, um, which is nice. But then since we gained a level in Sorcerer, um, we can swap one of our spells for a Cleric spell. And um, I want to grab the cantrip uh, Word of Radiance. So as an action, Word of Radiance, Burning Radiance erupts from you um, you know, and each creature of your choice, which is important because, you know, you can choose not to hit your allies, right? Uh, but within five feet of you that you can see, they have to succeed on a concentrate or sorry, a constitution save or take at this level, it's only 2d6 damage. Um, it's not amazing, but I think it will get significantly better next level. So I'll talk about it a little bit more then, but okay. um, that's what we're doing for now. I'm and interested. I, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's me at level 10. Okay, very cool. Um, and I, I find it interesting that, you know, I had gone bu Bugbear originally too, and I had looked and saw the wisdom thing, and I'm like, I can't not yeah. do something about that. And I find it interesting that you went Bugbear and you did. You you got Bless, you right. got divine, uh, you know, uh, Favor of the Gods. So mm -hmm. you have your own ways to deal with that. So it's interesting to me to see how we saw the same problem and and, and found both came up with solutions <laughs> but in different ways yeah, yeah i think that's really cool uh okay so we're getting into the double digit levels now uh 10 through 15. let's talk about you uh what do you got going on from 10 okay. to 15 or 11 11 through 15, 11 through 15 say. yeah so okay so we're gonna stick with sorcerer until we're done with sorcerer uh so for me i'm going sorcerer three here and this is where things start to get kind of fun so we get second level spells um, and I'm going to take the no-brainer, right? Enlarge, uh, enlarge, reduce. Uh, so again, for those who aren't familiar with it, you cast this spell, you can, well, enlarge by one size um, yourself or an ally um, or reduce an enemy, potentially they get a save against it and our charisma isn't good enough to probably risk that. But um, anyway, in this case, I love the idea of obviously like using Giant's Might, now you're large, casting enlarge on yourself, now you're huge, and taking up, you know, a three by three square with the bugbear and a, an additional 15 foot reach on top of that. Yeah. You're, a, you're a nine by nine on the battlefield, right? Um, as far as your reach goes, which is is probably overkill, but but I'm, I'm a fan of overkill okay. as people who watch my videos know. <laughs> some, some quick math in my head, uh, nine by nine is 81 squares minus the nine that you take up means 72 squares mm -hmm. of potential attack. Right. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, and so and so here here's here's what's kind of fun with this. I think um, your words of radiance uh, word of radiance goes to three d six damage, right? Because you're a level eleven character, um, and of course you get meta magic options. And I'm gonna recommend a couple different meta magics here: quicken spell and distance spell. So um, on our turn, you know, we could take two attacks and then quicken spell word of radiance if we had the sorcery points, right? And instead of the bonus action, you know, blunt end of, of the weapon that we normally are doing with Polar Master, um, bonus action, uh, quicken word of radiance. And since it moves out from us uh, to every enemy within five feet, and we are potentially a nine by nine, right? There's a lot of potential enemies that you could be hitting with that 3d6 of damage. Um, and in fact, you know, maybe we should kind of talk about what, what you and I had discussed as far as what happens when you grow and there's already an enemy sort of in that space, right? Yeah. Um, uh, now, my my personal, I, I haven't heard anything from Jeremy Crawford. Right. Uh, but to my understanding, uh, there are restrictions against moving in, into an enemy's square. Mm -hmm. um, but to my Not understanding, there's no... in. Yeah, to my understanding that if, there's no reason why you can't be moved into an enemy square. Right. Uh, like there's no rule that I am aware of that says you cannot be in the same square as your enemy. Right. Um, uh, that rule, in fact, I'm I'm certain it doesn't exist. Right. Um, so so, and, and if you grow, then you're not moving. You're growing. Right. Uh, move moving is its own thing within the rules. Yeah. Uh, so the the rules for moving into an enemy square would not apply. Right. So I, I envision here, um, you know, some some silly scenarios that will very rarely happen, but where, you know, you're maybe large already. Well, let's say you cast in large on yourself in a previous round and then you kind of run into the middle of a, of a group of enemies. There's five or six of them kind of, you know, scattered around and you, you know, bonus action uh, cast Giant's Might on yourself to go one size even bigger. And then you might even be sort of sharing space with, with some enemies, right? Um, but then as your action, uh, Word of Radiance, maybe even Distant Spell, uh, Meta Magic, and, and it goes 10 feet from you. Um, ah, so this is different. Yeah. No kidding. And it does say that it moves out from you, right? It erupts from you, but five feet. So, um, Ooh, so, yeah. so the idea here, right, is that you potentially um, have this sort of ability. If you're, if you're a nine by nine, 10 feet from you, right, in every direction, you could hit a ton of enemies with I that have totally missed all this time that Word of Radiance had, in, had a range. Because of normally spells like that are range self. Self. And then it yeah. says, and all creatures, it's in the text. Yeah. Right. And so, so as soon as you said, you know, I'm taking distance spell, I'm like, how's he going to use Why? distance spell? <laughs> and then, and then he's like, oh no, that doesn't work. And then, yeah. oh no, it works. Yeah. Wow. I think it works. I'll, I'll, I'll have to sure. check some more. But sure. my first instinct is, yeah, that range five feet, that should work. That yeah. should work. So you yeah. distance yeah. spell it. Now it's ten oh, feet from you in every nice. direction, and you're and you're yeah. a huge creature, right? That's a that's a pretty big AOE, and you're just using a cantrip. So, um, you know, could be really cool. Obviously, you're you're using sorcery points, but it's only one sorcery point for distance spell, so that's nice. I, I have to I have to pause and credit um, one of my viewers uh, that goes by the name of Shard, and he actually has a YouTube channel. Uh, this this idea was introduced to me uh, by him, so I, I've got to give credit where credit is due. Um, but anyway, I love that idea. I don't know that I'd be doing it like all of the time, right? But... I, I mean, as surprised as I am that it works. Yeah. And I think it's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure that spending sorcery points on uh, one extra range on a cantrip sure. is, is worth a sorcery point. It, it would but be. But it is cool. <laughs> it would be something where, you know, you have a lot of enemies and there's potentially you're hitting four yeah. or five, you know, for 3d6 yeah. each, uh, you know, can be nice. Or maybe alternatively you know again you're quickening the spell instead of applying distant spell to it because you've got a few of them that are within five feet of you right and you can run in there make a couple of attacks and you know throw out a little aoe cantrip um anyway at level 12 we're going to stick with sorcerer uh sorcerer four for another ability score increase your feet finally going to get our strength up to 20 um, that there's, you know, there's so many ability score increases and feats that I want with this build. But anyway, 
a lot of our damage and I mean, most of our damage and a lot of our control is is still coming from strength here, right? So we're gonna cap it. Uh, I considered going plus con here, both for the hit points and also for the improved, you know, difficulty check on some of our control features. But um, anyway, uh, level 13, Sorcerer 5 is where I'm stopping Sorcerer. I really wanted to get to third level spells. So uh, the third level spell of choice is Spirit Guardians. Um, because it is a cleric spell that we do get uh, to take. And th this is, you know, divine soul sorcerers are, are so strong when, when you have important cleric spells in your build, right? So this spell is just perfect for us. Um, yeah. It requires our concentration. So we wouldn't be able to enlarge ourselves anymore nor use bless, of course, right? Um, but um, for those it who goes are unfamiliar- nicely, It goes nicely with the slasher feet. Exactly, exactly. So for those who are unfamiliar, really quick, you know, uh, Spirit Guardians costs an action to cast. Uh, it lasts for one minute, requires your concentration, and then 15 uh, ten, feet- It lasts for 10 minutes. You're right, yeah. you're right. I'm, I'm so used to concentration spells taking one. Yeah. So you get a little extra duration there. Um, but then 15 feet from you, um, and so again, if you're large, that's, that's eight by eight, right? Um, you choose you choose who is affected by the spell. This is the thing that I love about Spirit Guardians. It says that you choose who is affected by the spell, and when they first enter, you know, the area of effect or start their turn there, their speed is halved. Period. There's no save against this, right? Um, you just choose who's affected by it, and it's like you're slowed, you're slowed, you're slowed. Um, so their speed is halved. And then they do get a wisdom save against damage, right? They make a wisdom save against our charisma, unfortunately, which isn't great. Um, so, you know, that's a 15 DC uh, for, for, for that save. But anyway, they fail it, they take uh, 3d8 necrotic or radiant damage, um, and then half on a save. So you're still gonna get some damage out of it, even if they make their saving throw. Um, I, I just coupled with all of your other snares and slows and, and redirects and things, I, I just like the enemies are just gonna be wading through mud. Right um, when you've got this up, trying to trying to get to you and to your friends, and and it's and it's decent damage. Um, and again, the thing that I love about coupling this with a bugbear and a polearm is that the range of your attacks is the same as the range yeah. of your uh, your spirit guardians. Um, so anyway, I I almost considered starting my sorcery levels sorcerer levels after fighter six. Uh, but I just, I really wanted to get to slash your feet and get my strength to, to 18. But I think it's an option if you really want to kind of get to this slow sooner. Um, uh, level 13 damage report, I'm assuming uh, bonus action is, is actually going to be Word of Radiance when you have uh, the, the meta magic available. And there's like at least three enemies that, that you would hit with it. Um, obviously, it's not always going to work, but... Um, assuming that's the case and not, not making any other assumptions about opportunity attacks that you may be getting and, and other things like that um, against an enemy with a 10 armor class and a plus zero to their saving throws, um, you're doing a 62 damage per round. So it was a huge jump from the last report. And, uh, and again, that's assuming, that's actually just assuming two targets getting hit with your cantrip. Um, and against an enemy with a 17 armor class and a plus seven to their saving throws, it's 44 damage per round. Um, so it's actually become a fairly decent damage dealer now, uh, in addition to, to the control. Um, level 14, going back to fighter for, for the rest of our career. So fighter nine, indomitable, you know, it's, it's something. Um, it's not the greatest, uh, the greatest ability ever, but it'll come in handy sometimes. Um, and level 15, fighter 10, uh, you get great stature uh, from rune knights, so your giants might goes to a 1d8, a little bit more damage, one one more damage per turn. Yeah, um, that one is a little bit of a letdown for yeah. level 10 ability as far yeah. as I'm concerned, but if you're going fighter 10, you're going 11, right? So. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And you do get a fourth rune um, and, and that's nice. And yes. uh, th this is where I really kind of went, okay, like would I be crazy to not take um, Storm? Like yes. it, okay. <laughs> well, I, thought I think so. you would. I, I thought yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the think, only, yeah. the only, it's, to me, it's almost like, I mean, Farm I, I, is really good. It's so good, yeah. right? But at yeah. the same time, like, it's it's one minute and you, you use your reaction 
every single turn to either impose disadvantage or to grant advantage. It to is so good. disadvantage on saving throws. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And attacks. Yeah. And it's just like, Oh, attack. But, no, no. Saving throws because oh, <laughs> you're in a party, man. You've yeah, got that's true. the wizard and this you got the wizard beside you. That's and true. He, that's true. You, you, he'll love you for the rest of his life <laughs> when you take that. That the only reason why I hesitate, I mean I take it, but it's almost with some reluctance, only because like again, so reaction heavy, right? Yeah. That it's like when you have this up, you like just you have to use it every turn almost and then i'm like sad that i'm not getting my opportunity attacks and my you know this cloud might be giant where we, rune and things like that where we're looking at things again from uh a different perspective in terms of times we're fighting per day yeah i think that yes, i think absolutely. you, you absolutely. can see the difference because mm -hmm. you know uh, if you have if, eight combats then well one of you, them is really really good because if you have two combats fun. per short rest yeah you are not using cloud rune in half of them yeah right yeah, yeah and if you have three combats you're not using it in most of them right um but when you do use it it's huge it's so good yeah uh and i would not use it on enemy attacks to impose disadvantage and i would not use it on my attacks to impose advantage it's for saving throws mm -hmm. and there um if you want to reduce an enemy's saving throw there are very few ways to do it mm -hmm. um and uh, you know, there's things like the Bane spell, but they require a saving throw in the first place uh, that they have to fail. Uh, and there's eloquence, eloquence Bard, and there's this, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, you know, Eloquence Bard is considered the best Bard largely for that. Right. And, uh, and that requires a bonus action as well. So it's not free either. Um, no, this is really good. Yeah. The only, again, the only reason why I hesitated is because I want to be making opportunity attacks as often as possible in addition to it. all the other things. Yeah. But no, you're right. You're absolutely right. Especially when you're having a, a lot of combats per rest. Um, you know, it's easier to think about, well, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm going to like, I'm only going to get my cloud once per short rest. I'm only going to get my fire once per short rest. Well, that's not a reaction, but you know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, having one that lasts for an entire combat round. And, uh, and, and keep in rest. mind, too, that we kind of talked about number of opportunity attacks we might be making. Mm -hmm. um, and we talked about, you know, one one per combat might be conservative. Still, we're not making an opportunity attack every turn. Every turn, yeah. Uh, and this is just huge, mm -hmm. right? Because you will have, you're the fighter, right? You, you, you've you got a bit of Sorcerer, I've got a bit of Warlock, but mm -hmm. we're, we're going to have Spellcasters in our party. Yeah. And they're going to be looking at hitting things on enemies um and if you can impose disadvantage on that saving throw that uh, is going to turn what could would likely be a success into likely a fail mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that's me to 15. okay um yeah so uh at level 11 um i'm going to be going rune knight 10 warlock one storm rune um and yeah i think it's fantastic uh at 12 I'm going rune light at 11. I, I jumped into 11 just because I wanted to get the third attack going. Um, so, uh, you know, I, there are things that Warlock is going to give me that made me really want to go into Warlock uh, earlier, but that third attack is so close, right? I just, I, I felt like yeah, it was necessary to go for right it there. first. You got to get um, it. So then I went to uh, 13. Uh, so I'm going back into Warlock and I'm going to take Warlock the rest of the way. Hmm. Um, and uh, so we're going to get, of course, invocations with Warlock 2. Mm -hmm. So I'll be taking Devil Sight and Eldritch Mind. Mm -hmm. um, Eldritch Mind is for uh, making sure your concentration doesn't fall. Um, and then Devil Sight, uh, you can combine with Darkness. I don't make builds generally that work around Devil Sight and Darkness. Mm -hmm. But I think it's an okay thing to have in your back pocket. Sure. Um, and then uh, level 14. Uh, then we'll be going Warlock 3, and you're going to laugh again. Pact of the Talisman, Rebuke of the Talisman. <laughs> yeah. That was, <laughs> like that, I said, I got some good know. laughs out of your last video. That was my, last, my last video. Yeah, because uh, same thing. Uh, and, and the thing about Warlock 3 with Dao is you get spike growth. Mm -hmm. So now our action surge is spike growth. And this is a pushing and pulling build. We've got pushing attack. we got crusher. got Rebuke of the Talisman. 
things are going all over and Just we're a good grappler pinballing people all over oh that. we're gonna they're gonna be dragging all over that spike gross yeah uh and that's 2d4 damage for each square you move into no safe um and then rune knight 11 warlock four uh so we get our fourth our next feat uh and i'll be taking skill expert mm -hmm. uh and the what for one reason i wanted another half feet because i was sitting on a strength of 19 same thing thorn in the side yeah uh so that gets me to the strength 20 and then i get arcana which i took mainly because we're getting advantage on arcana checks so right. it feels bad to get advantage with a minus one right so at least i'll have a you know it didn't really matter uh but i've grabbed athletics expert um okay. and that is going to give us uh at this point a plus 15 athletics check and if we happen to fail a grapple check, then we throw another D4 on there. Yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Excuse skill expert, uh, yeah, uh, gives us a, a number of useful things for the build. Um, and, but our athletic specifically skyrockets here. Uh, we can also shove prone pretty reliably. Uh, and when we're making uh, movement a struggle for our enemies, and we're doing more so because Another thing Spike Growth does is it slows them down. Mm -hmm. uh, and similar to... Uh, the Spirit uh, Yeah, yeah. A lot of things we kind of... We had different options, but we were different thinking along the same lines. The same thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, sometimes uh, shoving a prone in and then pushing into a, into a Spike Growth might actually be worth more than the weapon attack it replaced in terms sure. of damage. Sure. Um, and, but we'll have more use of that later. Uh, we're, uh, so yeah, the spike growth, we're going to pick up a lot, uh, but we'll pick up darkness as well, just to use with the devil sight once in a while, but devil sight's useful to have anyways, because sometimes you get caught in darkness. Right. Um, and, but yeah, if you work in a party, I would not build, make builds around darkness and devil sight. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a responsible way to be uh, a good player. Um, but I want to take a moment here and show you how this build is going to work on a battle map yeah um okay uh so right here we see our character so that's will mamu uh he is large size right now mm -hmm. and uh he's coming up against another large enemy the green around him is his reach his threatened area with the polar master and the red square is going to be an action surge where we're going to set up a spike growth uh, so the idea would be, uh, we're going to move up to this enemy, cast a spike growth, then we hit him, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll hit him a couple times. His speed is reduced by 10, and we're going to push him. Uh, and now he's in a spike growth. He takes another 2d4 from the spike growth. And now his only options are, he can either go into the depths of the spike growth, where He's going to be pushing through for several turns um, and, you know, we can throw axes at him, slow him down during that time. He's moving at half speed. He's taking a ton of damage. It's not the way you want to go. But if he moves in, then he provokes another opportunity attack and, or he provokes an opportunity attack. And then when he does, we push him <laughs> and he goes back. And with the half move and the minus 10 feet, and the losing two squares of movement, not only is he taking a ton of extra damage, um, he's I have a hard time getting out. He's gonna, yeah, he's gonna end that his turn. He's still gonna be within that spike growth and I'm gonna push him further in again on yep. the following turn. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of how that build works. I love it. Uh, all right. I, I prepared no roll 20 uh, <laughs> grid. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to I'll have to make one and plug you, it into you the You could video just to show how many squares <laughs> yeah. you're attacking. Like this it, room, I can it, hit yeah. anything in it. Yeah, exactly. I think in both cases, our characters, assuming they're in front of the party, um, are both fulfilling a tanking role without actually um, taking the hits. Right. 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 It's you're it's largely about just we're going to cover this huge area that's going to create this gauntlet that the enemy has to get through right to get to anybody right right um and uh yeah it's not so much redirecting yeah. their attacks on you except for in the case of goading attack for me um but it's it's more i'm going to protect everyone by just keeping the enemies from even getting to you in the first that's place that's right yeah. yeah and i and i think in both cases we found a number of ways to inhibit enemy movement uh and punish them yeah 
with with For damage it, yeah. while they're doing it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. All right. So we just have a couple of levels left. Let's obviously not levels that most games see and play, but right. um, it does give you some options that you wouldn't normally get. So mm -hmm. let's see where we end up. Um, for me, I went with the last two levels, Warlock. This is very, very, very good. Um, I would have loved another feed on this character, mm -hmm. but I got to tell you, two more levels of Warlock on this build. First, we're going to get Counterspell and Dispel Magic. Um, both, uh, of course, you very useful spells. We also have our Talisman, which works well with Counterspell and Dispel Magic. Because mm -hmm. if you fail a check, you can add a little bit right. more to it, right? right? Um, and we're do doing some like Dispel Magic. If, we're, if we've got a Storm Room, we maybe have advantage plus mm -hmm. the possibility of a D4 if we need it. Um, we're going to get Spirit Shroud as well. Uh, we're making some switches. Uh, and that is going to give us, you wanted the extra die on every attack, giving you your extra die on every attack, but we'll make it a D8 instead of a D6. Right. And we'll add some slowing on top of that uh, because any creature that ends its turn within 10 feet of us is slowed. And if we hit it as well, it's been slowed now by 20 and maybe on a spike growth. So t minus 20 movement, half speed. Maybe we'll use a an action to shove you or a weapon attack to shove you as well. Um, you might not even be able to get up right mm -hmm. we're also going to have thunder step at this point for maneuverability hmm. um and but the big thing here is at level six that's six 10 minute concentration free flights with hover um so basically functionally probably permanent fly mm -hmm. uh and in terms of control we can now cover up to a 30 foot ceiling as well uh so <laughs> as you come up against more flying creatures they still aren't going to get around us um and when we have creatures that are flying that's where our plus 17 athletics plus a potential d4 is going to come into play because we're going to fly up to them we're going to shove them prone they're going to fall take damage land prone um and now all the non-flying party members can pile on uh we also get permanent bludgeoning resistance at this point now that is a bit of a redundancy with hill rune but assuming we don't have hill rune up right. all the time uh it's still nice to have for sure um, so when it came to like i would have if i had gone fighter 12 it would have been nice to get great weapon master mm -hmm. um just for the you know it's going to be some extra damage but um the the, the the flight on this thing uh that's i think you can't not do that right. uh we end up with this character Constitution at plus eight uh, for saving throws, wisdom at plus seven, uh, and with indomitable on top of that. Um, now the damage becomes hard to estimate mm -hmm. estimate at these levels because of mm -hmm. the use of spike growth. Uh, I mean, we might just if a creature's at the edge of the spike growth, we might just grapple them with right. this huge bonus and just walk around and drag them right. Like you know, you have that option. Um, but the total I came up with is about forty one. Uh, or 15 percent over baseline and i have them i'll be posting the math that i used yeah. in, in the video description i also post i do these uh, characters on D, D beyond so if you want to see the completed character i'll post a link to the D, D beyond completed character as well cool okay tell me yeah, about the rest of your, my, your build my final two levels um are kind of no-brainers at level 16 fighter 11. um so you finally get that extra extra attack Delaying the extra attack is, is painful. I just, I really wanted to focus on the control, therefore went into Sorcerer sooner to try and, you know, pick up some of those, well, particularly Spirit Guardians. Spirit Guardians, yeah. Yeah, and I didn't even talk about, you know, the other spells that you might get, third level spells, you know, counter spell, obviously a great one, things like that. Um, but anyway, Fighter 11, uh, you get the extra, extra attack and and now your damage per round is is up there with, you know, with, with some of the best of them, right? Um, at level 17, fighter 12, and of course, if you get you get another ability score increase your feet. If I were if I were really trying to focus on doing more damage, great weapon master is a no brainer, right? Um, yeah. I went with plus con just because again, like I tend to say what's my role, and I'm just gonna like try and maximize that right to the nth degree. Obviously, you know, saying to the viewer, hey, you know. It's, it's your call here. And if you really feel like you're going to be better off with more damage, go for more damage. I want to increase my tankiness, but then also my control, you know, 
uh, difficulty checks on on some of these uh, on some of these fighter abilities, rune knight abilities. Um, so I bumped Khan to eighteen, um, and also you know maintaining concentration, of course, is super important. So Im improving our constitution saving throw is always a plus. I, uh, another thing we we came from different ways to do the same thing right yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. um word of radiance by the way goes to 46 here for the times that you are using it um and so for my final damage report it was again assuming um that i'm getting both word of radiance off as a bonus action and um my spirit guardians up and there's at least two targets that i'm hitting with that right um then just making two weapon attacks and against an enemy with, or sorry, three weapon attacks, because uh, I'm fighter 12, right? Uh, against an enemy with a 10 armor class um, and a plus zero to their saves, it's 80 damage per round total. Um, and against an enemy with an 18 armor class and a plus eight to their saves, it's 55, uh, 55 damage per round, which uh, is, is significant. In fact, um, for those who f who know, I, I kind of put my sustained damage per round builds into two tiers right now that'll probably grow as my number of builds increase. Um, but so tier one, tier two, this build as it stands almost sneaks in to my, to my tier two, to the very bottom of a tier two uh, list. And those are all builds that are focused on doing sustained damage per round, right? There, it would be very easy, I think, to, to tweak this build um, you know, probably drop Bugbear and go Variant Human or Custom Lineage for the free feat so you can kind of come online a little earlier. Um, make sure you pick up Great Weapon Master, obviously. You know, bump Charisma over Constitution. You'd lose some control features, but but do some pretty significant I, increase to your a, damage. I've had a number of conversations with people about DPR recently. Yeah. And uh, one thing I want to say about DPR is it's a... Uh, so I'm going to swear. It's a shitty tool. Uh, <laughs> it happens to be the only tool we have. Yeah. And that's why we do it. We're, uh, but I can look at two builds, then one's going to have a DPR of 40 and one's going to have a DPR of 60. And you cannot be confident that the 60 one DPR build is going to do more damage. Sure. Even. sure. Uh, because something like the reach of your bugbear here mm -hmm. is going to increase your damage even though it doesn't on DPR. And, 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 and it's so but hard to calculate something this, like that. The fact is, is when you don't attack an enemy, you do zero damage. Right. And so that ability to to get that attack when you might not have before, um, these kinds of things, DPR just can't. It, yeah. There's no way to make DPR yeah. take care of these things. Um, so, you know, as much as I, I do DPR on my builds and I talk about DPR, uh, I think, you know, you need like to- Your results when, may vary. I, I wouldn't change your build. <laughs> to to do more yeah, damage i think i think control is your, more valuable your, ultimately your build is going to do more damage than that calculation is going to represent right um uh, because uh compared to a build that needs to get within five feet of, of mm -hmm. an enemy um and gets less opportunity attacks or whatever right, uh, right. It, it it doesn't tell as much as a lot of people think it does mm -hmm. um yeah no question so so we're finished Yes. What, what did that take us? Two hours? Three hours? <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't know. But what I do know is that uh, we came up with very similar roles yeah. for our characters. In fact, almost identical, but we built it in two different ways. Right. Um, and a lot of the things that characters, our characters can do are the same done in different ways. Mm -hmm. You're slowing creatures with spirit guardians. I'm slowing them with spike growth. Um, you're, you're you know, you're shoring up uh saving throws with with um, uh favor to the gods i'm showing it up with resilient um so you know uh i think it's really telling that we saw so many of the same things yeah and uh although you had mentioned at the beginning you didn't we're hoping we didn't have the same build i do think <laughs> it, it is it is telling to me that yeah. when i see somebody else look at the same things and come up with the same kind of conclusions it's reassuring Right. Uh, to know that, yeah, okay, we're, we're, there's, there's, uh, definitely something going on beyond just my wildest guesses. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. And I'm happy to see that we did have some divergence, even though, like you say, we kind of ended up in the same place. We took different paths to get there, which, yeah. which, uh, is fun and, and creates, uh, you know, some, some different, uh, some different options, uh, and, and potential, you know, possibility, 
uh, possibilities for this character, especially, you know, like you've said, you know, you're playing in a party. If you've already got a warlock, maybe go the sorcerer route. If you've already got yeah. a sorcerer, yeah. maybe go the warlock route, you know? Yeah, Give I you think some variety. Uh, just because you go the bugbear route or the, the custom lineage route doesn't mean that you would be pigeonholed into the uh, warlock or sorcerer route. Right. And I, I think up to the point where we where we multi-class, you could go either way. I think if you're going warlock, it's because you want to go with crusher. Mm -hmm. um, so you do need to have that availability for that one yeah. feat. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, so no, I think you're right. I think uh, getting more feats and sooner definitely helps but it, it definitely helps on on both of them frankly but yeah. um you know i i wanted to focus on extending my reach as far as possible if i'm being honest with myself if i were playing this character in game i'd probably go custom lineage um because uh, i mean depending on the campaign obviously but like you know a lot of campaigns end at level eight or ten and i'll, and I'll so, tell you the first iteration of my character and this is not a joke i took it right to level 17 with bugbear <laughs> right and and i'm like this is a good build and then yeah. i'm looking and i'm like but that wisdom i i gotta do something I, I about need that. it yeah, yeah. And, and i didn't have the option of sorcerer because i wanted to do at combine to do the pushing and and, yeah yeah um so i had to go doubt and uh yeah so uh but i yeah i think bugbear is a really neat choice here yeah i yeah. think it's fun for sure yeah, yeah. Well, awesome. This was a lot of fun, Chris. Thanks yeah. for, for inviting me on and, and uh, you know, making the, the suggestion. I'm really glad you reached out. I had I had a blast uh, kind of coming up with this. And, and, and then it was really fun to kind of see, like you say, not only, uh, you know, the corroboration, I guess, between our ideas, but but then the, the uniqueness of the cool and fun things that you did with it that I that I hadn't thought of. The, and and I did like, you know, you'd be talking about something and it would click with mm -hmm. me exactly where you're going with it yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I'm like i you're know like, what he's oh, gonna say okay. yeah. <laughs> totally. except for distance the, spell and yeah. and word of radius word of that radiance. one that one took me totally off guard <laughs> well cool. yeah i i had a great time too and um you know let's see how these videos do if they do yeah. well let's do it again yeah, yeah. no <laughs> but, I, absolutely yeah. i'm I'd, I'd be I'd, I'd love to to do it again a few months yeah. from now or whatever yeah this um, is good so for my viewers if you're unfamiliar with triant monk which i have a hard time imagining but just in case uh you know make sure you check him out on his youtube channel uh he puts out fantastic content i really love it um so yeah make sure you uh you go there and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and same thing to mine. Uh, yeah, D and D optimized or D and D O, I believe D and D O. But yeah, that's that's what I shorten it to. But yeah. there's potentially a rebranding coming. Is that correct? Yes. Um, yeah. Look for an announcement on that probably in a couple of weeks as I as I okay. add more content and expand um, kind of the the content that I'm putting out. All right. Uh, but so, yeah, so that's where you're gonna go to subscribe, and then you'll get double the builds. And right. as you can see, uh, they're not necessarily exactly the same either. That's uh, right. Even though we do some similar things. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is going to be double the content for a lot of the viewers, and I think that's, that's right. great. That's right. Uh, okay. Well, take care. Best of luck. And uh, I guess yeah. we'll be in touch. We'll talk soon. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. DD is <laughs> for everyone. That's right. Thanks, Colby. Talk to you soon. Okay. Take care.